So I, today I want to talk about uh, ultrasonic cleaners and how to buy the right one for cleaning your watch parts. Um, this one set me back 20 whole dollars. So they're inexpensive, but you got to be careful when you buy one. <clears throat> and I'll uh, explain why. Uh, there are cleaners out there. Uh, if you go on eBay, um, you'll see a lot of them will say Sonic or Ultrasonic uh, cleaners. And some are uh, heated. There's uh, this. This is an inexpensive one. This is a 20, like I said, $20 one. You can get them as low as, you know, $15. Uh, this is not normally 20. I think they had a reduced price for a few hours or like a day and it was normally like 29 and I think they were just, he probably had a whole bunch of them in stock. He was just trying to clear out on his eBay store. So uh, he dropped it down to 19.99. So I picked one up. I was going to buy a more expensive one, a heated one. Uh, when you do search for these, make sure you get one, even if you get an inexpensive one like this. Get one with a stainless steel tank. Uh, this one has a stainless steel tank, um, and it's got some uh, parts here. Let me take this out here. It's not heated, although I think in the manual it does say that it will eventually heat the water. Uh, maybe just through operation, I'm not sure, but it's not. I don't think it's a true heated uh, heated one. There's uh, there's ones that do heat the the solution. Um, so this is what I use to clean watch parts movement parts. Um, I'm kind of getting away from that though, because there is, there is something called uh, cavitation pitting. And I'll show you in a brief, uh, a brief moment, uh, how to see if you've got a true ultrasonic cleaner that's in the 40 to 42 kilohertz uh, frequent, frequency range, because some of these are just uh, sonic cleaners and they just kind of shake uh, and they're not true ultrasonic. Ultrasonic is anything, you know, technically anything over 40 kilohertz, usually 40 to 42. Now, this one on the bottom is rated for, uh, this one I believe says 42 kilohertz. Yeah, so the frequency is 42. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to pause the video moment, moment and set it up to show you the difference in how you, well, how you can determine if your ultrasonic cleaner is a, two, a true 40 to 42 kilohertz ultrasonic cleaner. So bear with me one moment. So the way you tell if you have a true ultrasonic cleaner that is in the 40 or above uh, kilohertz range, take you a just a regular piece of household kitchen aluminum foil and just go ahead and fold that. You can fold it in any direction you want. I'm going to fold it in this this direction. Uh, and you could just set it in the solution. I just got plain water in there. Now keep a gap in between it um, as you fold it and just submerse it in the solution. In this case, it's just plain water for this demonstration. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and activate it. Okay. So the cavitation uh, in with aluminum foil being so thin and somewhat fragile, obviously fragile as it's thin, um, the killer the frequency will actually cause cavitation pitting in aluminum foil. If you can see the bubbles, that's the the, the cavitation moving. Again, this is just clear uh, sink uh, water with nothing else. But if, do you see the holes forming? Those those are the cavitation. Uh, again, the cavitation uh, pitting you get with the aluminum foil being so thin, of course, uh, you can see the holes forming. Yeah, yeah, you can see them pretty well, actually. So you can tell, that's how you can tell if your machine you bought from eBay or from Amazon. Uh, a lot of these are Chinese. Uh, for most household uh, uh, projects, you could get away with buying these uh, cheaper Chinese made. Uh, most of them probably are made in China, I would say. Uh, the really expensive, good ones, the commercial ones are going to be made in America. There's a few that do make them here. But uh, again, yeah, you can really see the holes. So that that's what it does to really thin alloy, uh, such as aluminum. Uh, it does, it puts, uh, it will, you know, the cavitation pitting or holes. And this this goes to my concern. So we, well, let's let me back up. So we know this, I'm going to turn it off because I think we demonstrated in here. Let me see if I can show you. 
Uh, yeah, let's see if the camera will focus here. So if you see those holes, there's, there's even microscopic holes you probably won't be able to detect on the camera. That's an indication you have a, a genuine ultrasonic cleaner. So that, that goes into my second point, uh, being careful when, you know, I uh, do watch movement service as a hobby. Um, put this right here. As a hobby, as a hobbyist, I, I, there's more expensive, like the LNR uh, cleaning machines that uh, professional watchmakers use. That's really out of, out of probably something that, you know, maybe a home hobbyist would uh, use. Uh, naphtha is a, a common, like, lighter fluid. Um, and be careful on that, too, because, like, your Zippo brands of lighter fluid have changed their formula. Like, Ron, Ron, Ronson, I'm not sure on the name, but all the lighter flu fluid uh, brands have changed their formula as of maybe several years ago, and they're not using strictly naphtha as a... Uh, uh, as as the main formula so uh they probably will clean but that's what a lot of hobbyists have been using yeah you can see the pinning really well but also use a ultrasonic cleaner so if you put a if you put some of your like eta movements in here and some of the thin gears i can't help but think and i have uh tried it with like a like an old kind of broken movement some really inexpensive cheap movements i I've, I've purchased on ebay and i on some of the gears it changed the colors you know the 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 nickel plating, it's changed the colors. Uh, it, it can actually pit the uh, movement part. So I'm not really that gung-ho anymore on using an ultrasonic cleaner on uh, on movement parts as a, as a as part of the cleaning process. So just, just, that's just my opinion. Some have had great success with it, but probably a, as a home hobbyist, if you're going to degrease your, your you know, your disassemble your movement, just use some degreaser and then finish off with some, you know, high percentage al uh, isopropyl alcohol, maybe 99%. Uh, uh, you might have to do some hunting around. I've been using 91% because it's readily available through like your local stores. Uh, you know, you want to, ideally you'd want to use 99% isopropyl because you want to get the lowest water content uh, mixture uh, with isopropyl alcohol as possible because, you know, there's, you know, it's, it's, it'll dry faster and less possibility of rust. <clears throat> but obviously you can speed that up with maybe, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, set it up when you take your, and I'll get into that too. When you take your movement parts out, you know, you can kind of lightly air dry them. Uh, there's some uh, methods, maybe you could use a hair dryer, you know, keeping it a little bit of a distance and kind of blow dry it. So there's no rust accumulation on there. Uh, but then your final rinse is going to be with uh, isopropyl alcohol, which will aid into the drying. So I just wanted to give that demonstration and just maybe a word of caution. Uh, anybody wants to chime in and say, uh, you know, state their, their experience, that would be good. Um, like I said, I've Maybe my first one I left in there a little too long, maybe just with a degreaser, a heavy degrease, degreaser uh, mixture, or maybe a watch cleaning solution uh, appropriate for ultrasonic cleaners, uh, maybe just a short, uh, maybe 60 seconds or something, because you can, you can, there's a lot of cavitation going on and you got thin enough parts, you're going to get the possibility of you getting, you know, taking off the nickel plating is there. Uh, so... I mean, you can see how much it just, just, just a few seconds we left it in and look at the holes again, but this is ultra thin, so it makes sense. Uh, for watch bracelets, I'm going to show you how to do that. That I, I really recommend an ultrasonic uh, cleaner for because, <clears throat> and I'll show you with the screws. Uh, I have an old uh, Jubilee from the late 80s, uh, 62, 62510H uh, Jubilee. And the screws, I'll show you how ground down those are. So that would also probably show why the stretches in the bracelet, the pins are also probably ground down similar, similarly. So uh, taking your bracelet, your Rolex bracelet or any watch bracelet out and probably putting it in an ultrasonic cleaner like with something like uh, with this, you know, you can set it on the top of there with uh, maybe even with this basket, uh, put it in there and just lay your bracelet over it, put your soapy solution in there. Uh, Purple Cleaner uh, seems to work really well, too. You can go to Walmart. Uh, the Castrol, I think, makes it. It's in a purple bottle, a degreaser cleaner, maybe like a 60-70%. Um, I just did a 93-150 uh, uh, oyster bracelet, and the grease just it, it just black gunk just poured out of the uh, 
out of the band uh, where, where the uh, you know where the pins were just immediately after I turned the ultrasonic cleaner on. You could just see the blackness and the probably you know skin material from the previous owners, uh, dead skin cells. But all that as as the bracelet moves uh, combines to become like a gritty grinding. Uh, you know, surface on the pins and the and the uh, screws, which you know, if if left un, unattended, could probably get to the point where it'll break a screw and you could lose your watch. So, I think maybe taking your bracelet out, your your Rolex or whatever bracelet, Omega, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a Seiko. Just cleaning it, it'll this. <clears throat> excuse me, this ultrasonic cleaner will get deep into the uh, pins and the surfaces where they. They grind with the bracelet, you know, with the links. Uh, uh, will help clean up all that debris. Uh, so, yeah, just an FYI uh, on how to how to detect if you have a true ultrasonic within the forty to forty two kilohertz uh, frequency. Uh, um, and also, uh, I'll show you. Like I said, I'll do a video uh, in, a, in a short. Uh, maybe in the next week uh, to show how to do the bracelets and how much I'll, I'll try to get one, uh, another one that hasn't been cleaned uh, as far as I know. And you could see just the black soot coming out of the pins and just the gunk. Okay. Uh, so if you find this interesting, please subscribe and thanks.